Hi, I'm Christian and today I'm going to introduce you to the 101 of Decipad. Decipad is a narrative-oriented tool for data modeling. In other words, it's a notebook that helps you turn your data insights into compelling stories or documents that people actually can read and understand so that they can follow your insight, follow your thought process and also trust in the data and the calculations that you give them. So this here is an example. It's one of our templates. You can find this on our website and give it a closer look. I'm just going to really quickly go over a couple points here. Um, you see that it's blocks. There's an image here. There's some text here. Then there's some input blocks here. So this is a published version of a model in Decipad. I can now increase the number of vets. I can increase the number of clinics um, and I can change the average transaction. And you see the whole document respond to this. The chart updates, this value here in the text updates. And this is true for the whole document. So I can play with scenarios here. I can customize this to my personal situation. I can say, no, it's only one consultation. Um, it's actually six procedures and everything will dynamically update and recalculate. And the thinking behind what the calculations are is very easy to follow because everything is obvious. So this is very introductory. So we now have an idea of what it is. Blocks, 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 data, data, data. What does it feel like and how does it work to build a notebook in Decipad though? Because that's why we are actually here. So to get started, we always start with blocks. Decipad is a vertical notebook. So you have blocks that are stacked on top of one another. And there's multiple types of blocks. So here you can see we have input widgets, we have visualizations, we have writing, headings, images, blah, blah, blah. All those things, most of them are self-explanatory on what they are in nature, or they are very easy to figure out once you just start using them. But what we want to do now is get into the meat and potatoes of the product, which is numbers. Because after all, a narrative is a result of a data insight. So let's start with some data. and. The first thing we do is we define some data. This is very similar to how you would do napkin math. You just jot something down, right? You want to get a few numbers on paper. In order to do that, we need to use number inputs in Decipad. Now there's a multiple ways you can create number inputs. First of all, it's here in the sidebar. It's under our most used blocks. You can also find it further down on the modeling. You can also search for it right here, number. And you can create a number input by just clicking here. What you can also do is you use the plus button, this, and then select number input from here. You can also just use the slash command. This is for some keyboardy people, which myself, for example, where you can just, while you type, you type a slash, this menu opens, you create a number input. And last but not least, there's a shortcut if you type equals, it will create a number input block for you as well. So now we have four number input blocks here. Let's look at how they are structured. What is a number in Decipad? Because it's actually a pretty interesting element and there's a couple of differences to other data modeling tools that you may or may not be used to. So the four elements of a number in Decipad are, first of all, the label. This here. It's called variable by default because that's essentially what it is. If you have a technical background, you will be familiar with the concept. Um, it's just a labeled value. The second part is the numeric value of that variable, of that number, which here is 100, right? It's literally the number. The third part, and this is an interesting part of Decipad that we will get into a little more later, for now, let's just say these are units. So I can give this a currency. I can give this a distance. I can say this are kilometers. I can also just type here. I type dollar, it turns into a currency. I type kilometer, it turns into a distance. So this is the unit of my variable. And then last but not least, there's the result preview. This doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense right now with simple numbers, but it will in a minute when we look at calculations. So now that we have established kind of the basic structure of a number in Decipad, we will take a look at what that means in practice and how you reuse them and how you would go about a real 
example. So let's say what we want to do is, um, yeah, let's say we want to do a savings goal and budget calculation. So what we have is, first of all, we have an income, right? That's, let's say we make $2,500, uh, but we also have expenses. We pay our rent, we pay our electricity bill, uh, let's say $1,100. And last but not least, we want to save something. We want to, every year, let's say we want to save 5,000 bucks. Okay, yeah, that seems fair enough. Now, what we do want to know is what our budget will be. So what is our budget? Now, here comes the interesting part. What we want to do now is we want to do a calculation with all those numbers. So we want to reuse them. And the way you do that in Desipad is you just type the name. So I want to take my income and you see the autocomplete suggests the income here. I can click here, I can, boom click plus uh, or oh, minus expenses. Now I can either click or I can just type a space and it will auto resolve into that reference for me. So that's what I have left over every month. So that's times 12. This is for a year. Boom. And now from this, I want to subtract my save goal. Save goal. Easy. Um, by reusing these values, what you can see now immediately is two things. First of all, this is very easy to understand. What's my budget? Well, it's my income minus my expenses times 12 for a year minus my savings goal. Ah, okay. You also now see how the result makes sense because I now see what this calculation yields after it is done. And there's another way actually you can reuse these numbers and I'll show you here. Let's do a second budget calculation actually, budget two, whatever it is. Um, I can just drag. I can pick this and drag it into here. And then I can say minus my expenses. I can also use our sidebar. If I remove the filter and go to data, I see a list of all my named numbers. So expenses, I'm taking my expenses, dragging them here, and I've built a calculation. So same principle as the autocomplete. It's very easy to reuse my values. I can drag and drop from the definition. I can drag and drop from the result. I can do this. This will create a multiplication here, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So now it works. I can drag from the sidebar. I can use the autocomplete. The same is true for text. So if I have text here, if I have text here, then I can drag. So I drag from here. And now I have my value in line. Note the interesting thing here is, we don't need this anymore by the way, um, my image is above the block, I can't delete it because I can't see the control, doesn't matter. Um, so if this changes, if say our income changes, then the inline value also changes. This is how you create a dynamic document that is a narrative that is responsive to changes. Okay, um, this budget calculation is kind of nice, but now let's look at one of the more interesting parts of the SEPAD, which is units, right? Uh, units can help you a lot making things simpler because let's be real, the income 2,800, there's some information that we don't reflect here. That's a monthly income. Now we could call this monthly income, but we don't really want to and we don't really need to, which is the biggest imp interesting part here. So what it is, is $2,800 per month. Now we're getting errors here because I can't just do calculations between per month and not per month, but I can do per month here as well because that's what my expenses are. And I can also say, I wanna save $5,000 per year. Now, this result doesn't make any sense. And the reason is that we, at Decipad, we understand the units. So what I can do now is I can say, hey, I want my income minus my expenses. And that says $1,700 per month. And I can then also say minus my safe goal. Now, what you see here is that this is 15.4K per year. And the reason is that Decipad understands how to convert between these values. It knows that, oh, we're now at a yearly basis because there's a value that's per year. So let me just 
recalculate all of this and bring that in line to the similar cadence. What you can also do if maybe you want your budget per month, right? Um, because that's more interesting for you. You can do the same calculation and then you say, and please give me this in dollars per month. And boom, it will just automatically convert. And now you know, oh, look at this. I drag this out, my budget will be $1,283 per month. That's pretty much all there is. We can now do some more interesting fun stuff. So we could, for example, say, hey, um, I want to see what would happen if I can kind of reduce my expenses. So let's turn this into an input widget and bring it up here. Or maybe let's actually turn it into a slider. Sliders are fun, right? And we say, hey, in the expenses could be 800 if we stretch ourselves really thin or 1100, the current one is the maximum, and we can go about them in steps of 100. And what I can do now, and you see here, is I can play. I can explore these scenarios. Hey, what if I reduce my expenses to 800? Well, my budget will suddenly be 1500 per month. And I can do the same with the savings goal and the income. Um, let's say the income is fixed, right? That's the savings goal into an input, uh, put it here. And let's say the savings goal, no, we want to save 10K if we reduce our expenses. And the budget is then a thousand per month still. So maybe we can have more expenses. So what you see is it's a very natural way to build this model and to have it in a way that is pretty much self-explanatory. I can read this. You don't have to explain a lot. Um, I'm seeing, let's add a couple hints here. Um, I want to know how much I can spend each month while still reaching my savings goal on good. Currently, it looks like my budget will be per month. And now I'm saying, oh no, I want to change my savings, so I want to save a lot of money. Um, but $133 per month is very rough. So what if I reduce my expenses to 800, 300 per month? I uh, probably can't do that. So let's turn this to 1500, um, 750 per month. Uh, I can maybe do 650 per month if it's getting interesting. So never mind the example itself, but you can see what it can do, right? The product is very interesting in terms of what it allows you to create. And from here on out, honestly, I'm just curious what you will build, uh, what you can build in a product. Let us know what you think about the product. Hit us with all feedback, any feedback, the good things, the bad things, what you would want us to add to the product, what you think is good about the product, what you don't like about the product. We love to hear from our users and we have tons of ideas to improve the product and to build it further. Um, we're happy to have you on our journey. Uh, Give us a shot, hit us up at desipad.com, create an account, play with the product, explore some of our templates, and by all means, join us on Discord or write us an email or just use the feedback function in the product. There's a help button down here that you can use and you can have a live chat with us. Um, that's real people, it's not an AI bot, it's us talking to you, answering your questions, following up on your problems, and hopefully building a better product in the future with you. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope I see you using Desipad soon. Hit me up, I'm Christian, uh, working at Desipad, and I uh, would love to have you as a user.